Well, it's certainly stunning me, and I've been at this for a while in the field of meteorology. Just storms today, Brittany, particularly hurricanes, are doing things that we just haven't really seen very much of. And Hurricane Lee certainly falls into that category. It has a fairly common name, but it's a very uncommon storm. Uh, one of the things that we've seen in the last 24 hours is that this storm has rapidly intensified. Uh, it really jumped from essentially an innocuous tropical storm or low-level hurricane to a Category 5 hurricane. Now, let me define for the viewers and listeners what rapid intensification means. That means that a hurricane's wind speed increases by at least 35 miles per hour in a day. I'm about to drop something on you that is stunning. Hurricane Lee's winds increased 80 mile hour in a day. And we've only seen that six other times in the recorded history, and those have all been in the last 20 years or so. And so something ominous is going on, but we've got to keep an eye on this storm because we don't see too many Category 5 hurricanes in the Atlantic Basin. When you and I talk, you caution our viewers a lot. Don't worry so much about the category. Don't get hung up on the category. But the way you said category five has me hung up a little bit on the category here. Can you describe what cat five is and if you're nervous? You know, a cat five storm winds well over 155, 156 miles per hour. And, and you're right. That, that's a, a lesson that I hope anyone that has listened to us over the years uh, takes away. It's the impact that matters more than category. However, when we have a category five storm, those are the types of storms that when they do make landfall, uh, they have catastrophic destruction. I mean, Hurricane Michaels of the world, for example, and so forth, just catastrophic damage. Now, the good news right now, as of Friday morning, when you and I are speaking, is that the best forecast models do keep Lee out to sea, it kind of curves it back out to the North Atlantic. However, uh, some models have been trending towards a little more of a westward nudge, which would bring it a little closer to the eastern U.S. or Canadian coast. So if I'm anywhere along the northern east coast of the U.S. and Canada, places like Cape Cod or up in Newfoundland, I would be watching this because we're still about a week away from any sort of close landfall encounters. But again, I want to emphasize right now, uh, the storm is not forecast to make landfall in the eastern U.S., but we are watching the trends in the models because, because when you have a storm this strong, with that much warm water in front of it, uh, it's important to keep an eye on it. And one of the other things that surprised me or stunned me as a meteorologist is the National Hurricane Center was very aggressive, Brittany, about forecasting rapid intensification days ago. They saw that this storm was moving into an environment that was conducive for explosive development. And that's just something that I, in my career of over 25 years, haven't seen that. The word explosive when you're talking about a storm obviously is never good. And I want to talk about these rapidly intensifying winds here. How was it able to gain strength so quickly? Because the numbers you're describing, you're saying this has only happened a handful of times within the past 20 years. How, only a handful of times really over the last 150 years, and most of them have been in the last 20 years. So it's a very rare event. But the point I made about the last 20 years suggests that something different's going on. And we know that that's the warming climate system, the warming sea surface temperatures and ocean waters. Uh, as I often say, hurricanes are big heat engines and warm water is their fuel. Uh, they're running on 93 octane fuel, not 87 octane fuel these days. And so uh, that's how this storm was able to really intensify so rapidly it had a lot of rich warm water to, to feed on and it wasn't really moving into an environment of, of strong wind shear that would tear the storm apart. Now interestingly enough Brittany we're in an El Nino right now. Typically during El Nino years uh, we see less frequent hurricane activity in the Atlantic but because ocean temperatures are so warm that is overcoming the typical lack of hurricane activity that we tend to see during El Nino. So in other words, the ocean temperatures are so hot, if a hurricane tries to form, it has plenty of fuel supply, irrespective of the big picture things that are going on around it. 